Hey guys, it's me. And today, I'm going to tell you guys a lot about these things, as well as everything you need to know about... Hey guys, Doctor Who here with 1HP and welcome back to Gaming Ergonomics 101. This is Lesson 3 and we're going to be talking about the keyboard. We're going to cover a lot of different topics today from the difference between gaming versus working ergonomics, keyboard types, your split versus standard versus short versus ergonomic. We're going to talk about keyboard angling and orientation, straight versus rotated versus tenting. We're also going to talk a lot about finger position, key position, and of course wrist position. Then ending with the stepwise approach to help you understand how you can optimize your body around your keyboard. Let's go! Okay, so one important distinction that we have to make is the difference between gaming and typing or working ergonomics. And the purpose and the amount of keys that we utilize are different and important to recognize. With gaming ergonomics, we tend to use WASD and we don't type as much with our right hand since we're using the mouse and we need the space for that. The purpose is efficiency, speed of key sequences to achieve a certain result and often repeating a lot of the same patterns of movement depending on what game you play. And with working or typing ergonomics, we're typing a majority of the time and our hands are locked at that full keyboard position and the purpose is to mainly compete or complete varied typing work and that doesn't necessarily mean that the movement patterns are consistent. It also depends on what you're typing. Okay next up, how do keyboard types affect ergonomics and affect our body? We're going to talk about membrane versus mechanical. No we're not. We don't use membrane keyboards because we're gamers because we care about speed and customization. So we're actually going to talk about the standard length, the compact or shortened length, your 70, 60, 40, and the split and ergonomic type. The standard is the most common type and the basic keyboard that includes the keypad for data entry, even though we don't really do it, which is why we're moving away from that towards the compact or shortened, whether it be 75 shortened, 60%. 40% it could be a little tiny keyboard and it really depends on your preference Mainly for us. I think we use it as a way to optimize space since we want to have a lot of free-range control of our mouse um, And then there's the split and ergonomic type Which I think gives us the best of both worlds We can really move the split keyboard so that we have a lot of the space with our mouse movement um, and it also increases sort of the variability of positioning and if we need to type in the respective game or chat Then it makes it easy for us to be healthy there So let's actually get down into the ergonomics of each one The standard keyboard often takes up the most space Which is often why we see that rotated position of the keyboard that so many gamers love and that does have some physical consequences in our shoulder and our wrist that I'll get into more in-depth details in the next few sections. But I do want to say because of the overall length of this keyboard, if we maintain it in that straight position or even in the rotated position, we, our wrists are put into this ulnarly deviated angle towards the pinky and that causes the overuse of certain muscles along the forearm but also in our shoulder. And not only that, it, if we rotate it, it can also tilt or rotate our shoulders inward. And that, as I will mention, has a lot of consequences, not only with gaming, but even with activities outside of gaming. The compact keyboard also has similar issues as it places us in awkward positions when we're typing. But for gaming, it actually is helpful if we can keep it in that slightly rotated position or if it doesn't take up as, as much space, we don't even have to rotate it and we can keep our shoulders in a more neutral position. Okay, next up we're moving on to the ergonomic keyboard, which often means that it's either split or it's rotated, allowing us to maintain this neutral straight positioning of our wrist, meaning we're not going to overuse the muscles on the pinky side of our forearm. So that's great, 
but it also we have to realize again gaming versus keyboard ergonomics it actually is beneficial for both because it keeps our shoulder in a more neutral position if we're actively trying to keep it straight keeps our wrists in a more neutral position and even for typing it also allows us to maintain neutral for both shoulder and a wrist and hand because we're able to move the keyboard rotation or split a little more freely on your desk setup so there is a little less risk with the ergonomic keyboard compared to the others although if we think about specifically with gaming the compact and split or ergonomic keyboard are, are pretty similar with the standard one having slightly higher risk than the compact and ergonomic again i want to make sure that you guys realize i mentioned over and over that ergonomics is still overall a small part of the picture as it relates to our overall gaming health so if you prefer the standard that's also fine we just need to know hey how does it actually affect the risk there's slightly more risk but the most important thing with the keyboard of course is your wrist angle as we'll talk about more in the later sections all right, next up in this lesson, we're going to talk about the ways that the keyboard can be angled, right? We need to talk about the rotated keyboard position, but we also have to talk about tenting, right? That means how much it tilts up in this direction, allowing our wrists to, instead of being in what we call a pronated position, palm down, to go more towards neutral. And this is what we call supinated palms up. So the tenting allows us to move more towards this neutral orientation the first thing we need to chat about is of course the straight versus rotated as i mentioned it often leads to some physical consequences at our shoulder and our wrist but specifically at our shoulder what happens there is that our shoulder becomes internally rotated there's some expected stiffness and even weakness that occurs if we maintain it in a long period of time and if we keep our shoulder here our pec can get stiff we have over lengthened muscles along the back side of our shoulder. Our rotator cuff is at a, at a non-optimal position, which means it has to, it might fatigue a little more easily. That definitely leads to wrist fatiguing more quickly, which increases your overall risk of, again, shoulder pain, now wrist pain. And then also because of that stiffness, it affects the mechanics of how well your shoulder moves. So when you do your daily activities or any other sports you might be interested in, you might have an increased risk of injury or pain there. Outside of internal rotation, I also want to mention protraction of the shoulder, meaning how much the shoulder blade rounds around your torso. You can actually maintain your shoulder in a neutral position, but your shoulder blade becomes protracted. And we see that a lot in that rounded shoulder position where it's both internally rotated and protracted. And again, it's the same issues. It causes certain stiffness, certain weakness of muscles that affect not only your shoulder and wrist, but also other activities that you guys might enjoy doing. There's an increased risk overall. So the big thing here that I'm trying to say is we need to pay attention to our shoulder position to avoid that protracted or rounded shoulder position, but also the internally rotated elbow uh, wrist in compared to the elbow position that leads to overall increasing risk of pain Okay, of course one thing I have to talk about with keyboard angle is how does it affect our wrist in this position? As I mentioned many many times we try to keep it in a more neutral position whether you have some support there or you use the palm rest to keep your wrist in a more neutral position or slightly extended because that allows the forearm muscles, especially the ones at the top, to not become overly used. Even the ones at the bottom, if we're overly extended, they're overly lengthened and they don't work as well, meaning earlier time to fatigue and then higher risk of wrist pain. So if you notice that your wrists are a little tilted up too high, I would look to find some support for your palm, find some support for your wrist, so you can keep it in a more neutral position and reduce your risk of overall injury there's a lot of minutia as it goes into how as you compensate here your wrist has to go down so you tend to use certain muscles better but that is not the subject of this because clinically there's not a lot of additional benefits in understanding that all you guys need to know is let's stay as close to neutral as possible 
and then you will have least risk of injury. All right, now we're going to get into the discussion of tenting keyboards, specifically the ergonomic variant. I have now the ability to tent, bring that inside of the keyboard, the thumb side of the keyboard up, allowing us to move into that neutral position I showed you guys earlier. And it's been shown in the research that that reduces a lot of the activity at your forearm, even in your shoulder. So saying that there's a reduced risk of injury, which is definitely true. But for the nerds out there, there has been some research recently in 2015 and 2019 that indicate differing results and really combating results uh, when it comes to wrist enhanced strength in different positions of the wrist. And it seems to indicate that despite having less activity in the neutral, more neutral position, it doesn't mean that the muscles work optimally in that position. But this is a more nuanced discussion and I, I don't think there's many clinical benefits associated with that. The bottom line is that if you can tent it, any sort of movement towards pronation or towards neutral will help potentially reduce the risk of forearm and shoulder discomfort. And it's my opinion that it's pretty marginal, probably a 5% reduction of risk as there's so many other factors and again, ergonomics playing the really small role, the 10% role, um, and it matters more for those that play up into the eight to 12 hour range. Uh, right now I have a Kinesis gaming keyboard um, that I love. I mean, but I do strengthen my wrist and hand every single day. So that is again, the more important part of wrist health. The final thought that I want to leave you guys with uh, relating to keyboard rotation and angling is that shoulder position is important. Uh, the common compensations that we see with the shoulder internal and protracted positions often lead to irritation of nerves in the neck and shoulder. And that is a more common the reason why we have numbness in our hands compared to irritation of the median nerve at the carpal tunnel. It is mainly due to our posture at our shoulder and our neck that leads to the numbness. I'm going to repeat that. It's not because of your carpal tunnel. It's a possibility, but for gamers, most of the time it's because we're so hunched over that it causes irritation of nerves over here. So the more you know. All right, guys, that was part one. That was the more big picture macro information about keyboard ergonomics. In part two, we're going to go through more nuanced discussion, the hand layout, actuation pressure, ortholinear versus standard keyboard or key layout. Thank you guys so much for watching. Get ready for lesson four. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, and share this with anyone you feel like this might be helpful for. And I'll see you guys soon.